الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters People have a bad habit of comparing themselves to others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually told us that He has favored each one of us in a unique way. You don't know what Allah has taken away from another and given them something you're looking at. Perhaps if the same was taken away from you, you wouldn't even cope and you wouldn't manage. This is why in Surah An-Nisa, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ don't wish for and don't yearn for that which Allah has blessed some above others. Allah made you a male, alhamdulillah. Allah made you a female, alhamdulillah. Allah has given you, alhamdulillah. Allah has taken away from you a few things, alhamdulillah. Praise Allah upon all conditions. The minute you look at someone else and you start wishing for what they have, your contentment is diminished automatically because you are not happy. Rather concentrate on what Allah has bestowed upon you, what He has given you, and you won't go wrong. Uh, you know, you will have to adjust your life based on what Allah has given you. Some people have a lot, but they lack sleep. Some people have very little, but they sleep well. Some people, subhanAllah, they eat worth just a few dollars or pounds, and others eat worth a lot, but you might find the more nutritious food might be that which less money was paid towards. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. My brothers, my sisters, if you look carefully at this piece of advice, which is taken from the Quran, Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped us fine tune our thinking. We will become content when we realize we have been gifted. In order to realize the gift, you're going to have to do a lot of thinking. You're going to have to understand, make do with what Allah's given you. Not everyone is the same. And everyone has been tested with different tests. So let's take heed, inshallah, with that particular verse. Then I'd like to go to verse number 36 of Surah An-Nisa and the following verses. These verses are actually so powerful, they have in them advice. And this advice, if we were to adopt it, I promise you we would achieve contentment, happiness and success. Listen to what Allah says. وَاعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا He starts the verse by saying, Worship Allah alone and don't associate partners with Him in worship. And be kind to your parents. Kindness to your parents. Subhanallah. We start off with the worshipping of Allah. We move on to kindness towards parents. What is the connection? Allah is the creator. And in order to bring us into existence, he used a means that he chose, we didn't choose. Those were our parents. So even if your parents are strange in their behavior and wrong and absurd, and even if they're uh, criminals, we need to offer a little bit of kindness to them. We need, we need not obey their instructions when they are wrong, but we must be kind to them. Allah has never said, follow blindly what your parents say. Many parents sometimes abuse their children by blackmailing them religiously, saying, I'm your parent, Allah instructs you to obey me, so you shall do as I say. If you have that attitude, you will lose contentment and so will your children. So don't do that. You don't have the right to instruct your children beyond the capacity Allah has given you. They have freedom too, to a certain extent. You need to understand this. You cannot impose uh, whatever you want upon your children, claiming that you, they have to listen to you. Allah said they have to be kind to you. They have to be respectful to a certain extent, but they do not obey you where they don't have to obey you, especially when it comes to the transgression uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or when it comes to their rights. One quick example is to impose on your children your choice of whom they should marry. That is prohibited in Islam. They need to be happy and they need to want what you might have suggested to them or they might want something else. We need to remember this. If you want to lose your contentment and your happiness and you want to lose your sleep, then you begin to impose upon people that which 
you're not allowed to impose such as what I've just mentioned now regarding marriage. It's a very important point. That's why I spent a moment speaking about it. You want happiness? Learn to communicate. Learn to be kind to your parents. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be kind to your relatives. Wabidil qurba. Be kind to your relatives. Remember to do ihsan to your relatives. Be kind to your relatives. Who else? The orphans. Wow, we spoke about the orphans previously. And here Allah mentions it again in Surah An-Nisa. As well as the masakin, those who are poor. Be kind to them. Don't rebuke them. If you want contentment, a beggar is asking you something, you can either respectfully walk away. You can, you can give them something through kindness for the sake of Allah, but don't rebuke them, don't abuse them, don't hurt their feelings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment. You're searching for contentment, don't cause harm to others. If you're causing harm to others, you will not achieve any contentment. Then Allah says your neighbors, no matter who your neighbors are, even if they're those who are traveling with you, those who are perhaps living next to you, those who work with you, all these are people you interact with, they are considered different types of neighbors. Even those in a mode of transport that might be seated next to you, they are considered your neighbors. Don't hurt them, don't harm them. Neither with a foul smell, nor with smoke that is going in their direction, nor with anything that is verbally abusive or in any other way. If you, if you are careful of this, Allah will grant you the contentment that you are so uh, uh, desperately searching for and every one of us then Allah says, وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ Ibn Sabil is a person of uh, the path, you know, whether, whether it is uh, a homeless person, uh, even if it is a person who is just out of their own homes and they are traveling, all these you need to be kind to people. In a nutshell, Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا Allah does not like those who are arrogant, those who are haughty, those who are proud and filled with pride. Work on, your, on these habits, eradicate them, and you will definitely achieve contentment. We move on to verse number 38 of the same surah, Surah An Nisa, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us regarding spending. Allah says that you should be spending. Listen to the verse. وَالَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ رِئَاءَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Allah says those who spend their wealth. So on one hand Allah is speaking about spending wealth. And I'm sure we've heard about giving the orphans moment ago, moments ago, giving the poor, giving those in need with kindness. And then Allah says watch your intention when you're giving. If you are to give and your intention is to be a show off, then we have another problem. So look at the balance Allah is striking. On one hand, He tells us that you must give and you must be kind. And on the other hand, He says, hang on, don't spoil your intention. Don't do it to show people, do it for our sake. So in this verse, Allah says, those who have spent in order to show off and they don't believe in Allah nor in the last day, they stand to lose. They will not achieve contentment because it will never be enough. You're trying to please people. People will laugh at you. You please Allah, Allah will reward you. It's amazing. If you please people, you have spent a million. There will come another person who will spend 10 million. Yours is dwarfed. But when you spent it for the sake of Allah, the small bit that you might have spent holds a lot of value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is warning us to say, don't allow yourself to be spoiled with intention such that you are starting to show off. Always go back to your intention, clarify it, purify it, straighten it, and it should be for the sake of Allah. You will be so happy. Whether people have acknowledged you or not becomes irrelevant. If someone says, oh, thank you, Jazakumullah khair, may Allah reward you. Alhamdulillah, we're happy that they made a dua for us, they supplicated for us. But if that doesn't come, we did not do the kindness because we felt they deserved the kindness, but we did the kindness because we know Allah loves those who do kindness or who engage in kindness. Remember that. I repeat this. We engage in kindness because we know Allah loves those who are kind. We don't engage in kindness because we deserve or because we think the ones whom we are being kind to deserve it. If you were only kind to those whom you thought deserved the kindness, the world would never become a better place. 
But if you, if you are kind to everyone, because you know that's what makes Allah happy, then definitely you will achieve contentment and you will contribute towards the uh, betterment of the entire globe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment. Then I want to move on to verse number 45 of the surah where Allah speaks about how to handle enemies. Wallahu a'lamu bi'a'da'ikum wa kafa billahi waliyyan wa kafa billahi nasira. Indeed, Allah is aware of your enemies and He is sufficient as a protector and He is sufficient as a helper. This beautiful verse acts as a supplication as well. If you repeat it, subhanAllah, the contentment you will achieve. If you believe in it, there is even greater contentment. If you know that Allah is more aware of your enemies than they are themselves, that's powerful. Allah knows them better than they know themselves. Subhanallah. So Allah knows your enemies better than you do, but Allah knows them better than they do, which means He knows everything about them, more detail than they know. Allah definitely knows. If you believe and you're convinced that Allah is in control and He knows, and then you believe that He is enough for me. Kafa billahi waliyan. Allah is sufficient as a protector. Kafa billahi nasiran. Allah is sufficient as a helper. You will achieve contentment. You will sleep at night. You will sleep at night a sound sleep because you know Allah is the one who's going to take care of me. With us, you have a small enemy, you have someone who dislikes you, you lose sleep because your conviction and faith in Allah is so weak. Don't you believe Allah is going to protect you? Allah will not allow to happen anything that is not written against you. And if it were written, it will happen even if you were the most protected person by others. But if Allah is your protector, subhanAllah, there is nothing more that you want. So remember that, my beloved uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, another verse that we need to go into also very briefly is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the trust that we're supposed to be fulfilling. Listen to what Allah says, verse number 58 of Surah An-Nisa. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تُؤَدُّوا الْأَمَانَاتِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He has instructed you to fulfill and to give the trust to whom it belongs to. Fulfill the trust right to the end. Don't break your trust and inshallah, you will achieve contentment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us honest people. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.